Dragon Ball Z, possibly the most popular anime to ever exist, if you don't count Pokemon. Dragon Ball is a Japanese animated series that began all the way back in 1986 with a little boy named Goku going on adventures with his friend Bulma to find seven magic orbs to grant a wish. This then evolved 30 years later into a battle royale multiversal tournament where after unlocking a power only used by the gods themselves, Goku must battle against a red glowing muscle man in the void of space to save his entire universe from being erased. Although if you clicked on this video, you probably already knew that. I've been a huge Dragon Ball fan my entire life, from when I was a kid watching Dragon Ball Z Kai on Nickelodeon after school, to now as a grown ass man getting excited over shiny PNGs of Goku in a mobile game. Part of the reason I was so into Dragon Ball as a kid was because of the video games. Until 2013 when the movie Battle of Gods dropped, the Dragon Ball series was kind of being completely carried by the video games. Sure, I'd see an episode on cable every now and then or one of the movies, but the video games are what truly got me me into the series. Budokai, Raging Blast, Attack of the Saiyans, Budokai Tenkaichi, these were all crucial in getting me hooked on the series as a child. However, while the official games were great, there was another type of Dragon Ball game I remember playing, the fan-made ones. Ever since I got my first laptop when I was like 11, I was obsessed with going on to Game Jolt and downloading fan games. Mario, Sonic, and of course, Dragon Ball. I remember downloading a bunch of poorly made DBZ fighting games, playing them for like 30 minutes and then never touching them again. That was the life. However, nowadays, I feel like a lot of people don't acknowledge that these fan made experiences even exist. So today, I'm going to be going over and reviewing a ton of different Dragon Ball fan games. And if you aren't a fan of Dragon Ball and are still watching, thank you for being a die-hard Tobup fan, I swear, I'll put out like three new Spongebob videos after this. Quick note that I'm critiquing these games based on the games themselves, not the people behind it. I think it's so damn cool that people still make Dragon Ball fan games, and I think you should keep it up. Now, I decided to separate them all into three categories to make my life just a little easier. Mugen, Roblox games, and mods. Now, I know mods don't technically count, but I don't care. Boo-hoo. Also, all the games will be linked in the description if you want to play them. Is there a reason I don't hear about Dragon Ball fan games anymore, or are they secret a hidden gem of the fan game world. Let's start off with everybody's favorite, Mugen. I, I don't know if Mugen's common knowledge or if I'm just terminally online. Yeah. First of all, what exactly is Mugen? Well, Mugen is a game engine where you can make 2D fighting games, but the whole gimmick is that it's the ultimate crossover. You can make a game and add any fighter from anywhere and make them fight anyone at any place. Look, you can even make Mario fight Luigi! Not only that, but it's super simple to make a character. In fact, I remember making Mugen games when I was a kid. I was only able to like make Sonic Red, but trust me, it was fucking groundbreaking as a 10 year old. Anyway, since Mugen was a fighting game engine that had limitless possibilities, you know people made Dragon Ball fan games. Now on paper, that seems amazing. Custom Dragon Ball fighting games where you could play as any character in any form on any stage? It's a dream come true! Until you actually play them. But hey, let's not rush to judgment just yet and actually play a few of these games. Starting off with Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Fighter 2 created by Sasuke Uchiha 592. Well, actually, it's a little more complicated than that, because while they're the one who put the whole game together, all of these people, whose names I will read in 5 seconds, actually made the characters. Also my buddy, Eric. This game, or rather all Mugen games, have the same menu format. Arcade, versus, training, survival, com v com, and options. All of these games will have these. One of the reasons I love Mugen games is just seeing how many characters people can cram into a game, and holy sh**, that's a lot of Goku. As you can see, this game takes the bigger number better person route, as they have over 140 characters to choose from. Although they did, in fact, forget my favorite character, Goku Mid. Most of these characters appear to be very similar or just straight up recolors, and with a roster this big, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. Now, I'll admit that playing with a keyboard probably wasn't the best way to play a Mugen game. They function better with an arcade stick or controller, as they are all arcade fighters, but either way, this game controls alright. You got the basic punch and energy blast buttons, which you could combine to do special attacks. You have some ultimate moves, and that's really it. This game doesn't set out to revolutionize fighting games, and that's fine. It's just fun to mash buttons with various characters to see what kind of goofy Dragon Ball attacks you can use. Then again, and Mugen's a tad bit limited in what you could do if you're not a godly programmer, so I'm not blaming the game's creator on this one. I give this game 4 Gokus out of 10. 
Next up, we've got Dragon Ball Super Mugen made by Mr. S on Game Jolt. This one isn't as customized as the last one, but I will admit I had more fun playing this one. The character roster in this game, while way smaller, was a lot more unique in how they played. My favorite character was Jiren because you couldn't die and you could just hit the bots with these bat insane combos that make you feel great about yourself. There wasn't a whole lot to this game. It had the same game modes as the last one, but I played it for a tad bit longer. A solid five Gokus out of 10. I don't know why I'm rating these. I never planned to do that, but oh well, I'm going with it. Lastly, we've got probably one of the most well-known Dragon Ball fan games, Hyper DBZ, which was created by Balthazar, Cybaster, Iced, and a bunch of other people. This game is possibly the best Mugen game I have ever played. Every single sprite is custom made for this game and very well made at that. The roster isn't huge, but each character has a unique move set and list of special moves. I was actually having a lot of fun attempting to pull these moves off. However, I'm horrible at video games, so I got my ass kicked by the bots, but hey, I still had fun. You can really tell that a lot of love and care was put into making this game. Now, it still has the same game modes and settings as the previous games, but that's just a Mugen thing. Not much you can do to change that. Overall, if I had to recommend a well-balanced and fun Mugen game, I'd recommend Hyper DBZ. But if you just want to play a super duper Saiyan 12 Goku, go with any other game. A quick search on Game Jewel will help you out. I give Hyper DBZ 8 Gokus out of 10. Now back in the day, Mugen was actually the most popular place to make Dragon Ball fan games. However, that's not the truth anymore. The most active part of the Dragon Ball fan game community is in a place that's much more surprising and terrifying. We're talking Roblox. <laughs> I'm not even gonna f***ing lie with you, I play Roblox. Roblox, the children's game making platform with millions of different games and players to play them. And like I said before, I do actually play Roblox. I feel like it's overlooked a lot because of its main player base. There's some really solid games on this platform, mostly a fan of the horror games. Anyways, enough justifying my playtime in Squid Game Tycoon, we're here to talk Goku. Of course, with such a monumentally huge player base and game library, there's bound to be a hefty amount of games based on DBZ. I've chosen four here to take a look at. Will these be quality titles? Of course they will. I trust Alan Game with my life. First on the list, we've got every second plus one key in DBZ. DBZ, quite a mouthful. This game was made by the one and only Alan Game. I need this guy to be my best man at my wedding. The game loads in, and yeah, I have no clue what I'm looking at here. This isn't a complaint exclusive to this game. There's a million of these weird, grindy games on Roblox where you're overwhelmed with a million bright, colorful options. This is one of the tamer ones too. Trust me, it could get much worse. Anyways, how this game works is that you have to attack these bad guys to build up energy or key. The more key that you get, the more damage you could do, the stronger the enemy you can defeat. After defeating enemies, you get these trophies that you can use to get a randomized pet that helps you do more damage. You can also combine any duplicate pets you get to make them stronger. The end goal is to get so strong that you can rebirth, which basically means you start over with higher stats. You continue this cycle until either you're grossly overpowered or you realize an hour has gone by and you've been playing a Roblox clicker game. Every now and then an enemy will drop a Dragon Ball, which once you get all seven, you can summon the wish granting dragon Shenron, who just gives you a boost to more damage. Everything you can unlock in this game that isn't cosmetic is just to increase your damage. Pets, damage increase. Rebirth, damage increase. Spending copious amounts of your parents' money on digital currency, damage increase. Oh yeah, let's address that. Now, I personally like idle clicker games. I'm a sucker for cookie clicker, or really any tycoon on Roblox, but what I'm not a sucker for is microtransactions in clicker games. I know why they make these. Little Johnny plays a funny Dragon Ball game on Roblox, sees that instead of actually having to play the game, he could just get the immediate satisfaction of power, and he steals mom's discovery card and buys Goku's therapist for a 20% power boost. I mean, come on, even the shop button is bigger than the others. Now, I can't tell you how to live your life. Buy as many Robux as you possibly can. I don't care. But I feel like it just kind of defeats the purpose of a clicker game to just immediately buy everything. Anyway, sorry about the ranting about a children's Roblox game. The game itself is fine. I can't wait to see it at the Game Awards next year. Five Gokus out of 10. Next up, we've got Rage Rebirth 2, created by Magno Fox. I actually used to play this game when I was in middle school all the time. Back then, it was a fun multiplayer Dragon Ball game that I didn't have to pay for. Does it still hold up? Uh, 
Kinda. Rage Rebirth is an online arena fighter where one of the gimmicks, similar to the Mugen game I discussed, is that everyone is playable. You want to play as Goku, Kid Goku, Red Goku, other Red Goku, me, or Yamcha? Knock yourself out. Every character has the basic kick, punch, and block. You also have five special attacks, four super and one ultimate. The combat system is okay, you have to lock on or else you aren't hitting anything, but even then the super attacks can miss a lot. Other than that, it's fine, especially for a 3D Roblox fighting game. Also, any point while you're fighting someone, another player could just run in and clean up the both of you, so that's always fun. The characters are all also balanced, so you can at least play whoever you want without worrying about getting one shot. I still like this one, however, to unlock all the characters, you have to grind it out a good amount. I played for like half an hour, and I've only got like 5% of the characters. I used to have like everyone, but they must have wiped the servers, or they just really hated me for some reason. Anyways, I'll be giving Rage Rebirth seven gokus out of ten next is dragon ball z hyper blood made by lister z what does hyper blood mean i have no clue it sounds like a disease i'd also like to thank this game for saying if you use hacks you will be banned i had my dbz hyper blood hacked client up and ready to go but that warning sure saved me this game operates more like an rpg you go around beating up enemies to get xp so you can level up your stats to get more attacks to use the graphics on this one are a bit odd on one hand it's got this neat almost cell shaded look to the player model but then everything else is ugly. Frieza has mismatched body parts, and for some reason, Jiren is the only one with a default Roblox face. I'm gonna be honest, I had no clue what I was doing in this game. Every enemy would one-shot me, but fighting them was the best way to get XP. Trying to fight other players gave you virtually nothing, so I just kept dying a lot. I like the combat mechanics, I feel like it's got a faster pace compared to the last games, but also, I won't lie, I was bored as hell playing this. I had no directions on what to do, and there weren't many other players either, so I was just kind of flying around, punching bosses, dying immediately, and repeating. I'm sure though, if I played a lot longer and leveled up, there'd be more to do, so I can't bash on it too much for that. I'm giving this game 3 out of 10 Gokus. I am unsure if the Roblox community will hate me for this one. Last but not least, we've got Dragon Ball Tycoon. If you're unfamiliar with what a tycoon is, a tycoon is a type of game where you typically make money to keep upgrading some sort of building or business. In Roblox's case, most tycoons involve making money droppers to slowly evolve your base, get weapons, and fight other players. I'll be honest, tycoons are kind of my guilty pleasure. It's so fun to kill an hour or two with some friends by grinding out a tycoon and bullying kids until they leave because we won't let them spawn. It's the American dream. Anyways, Dragon Ball Tycoon, made by Tycoon Empire, is a very standard Roblox tycoon. You spawn in, pick a character who your building and weapons will be based on, and start making money. For this one, I chose my man Gogeta, the fusion of Goku and Vegeta and proceeded to build my empire. Also, something I always think is funny with these games are the weapon choices. Dragon Ball is always known for these crazy energy attacks on martial arts, and the two weapons I started with were Gogeta's Katana and Shuriken. There's not a whole lot to say about this game, there's thousands of ones exactly like this, and it's just alright. My favorite part was killing my friends by bumping into them with the sword. I give this game 5 Gokus out of 10. And those were all the Roblox games. I will give Roblox credit because they're really the only mainstream Dragon Ball fan games nowadays. Sure, they're not nearly as recognizable as other fan games to actual members of the community, but the general public is probably more likely to know about these games compared to something like Hyper DBZ. However, most Roblox games are just made to make money, including some Dragon Ball ones, so I don't know if they necessarily have as much soul as the other ones in this video. I mean, for f**k's sake, they whitewashed Piccolo. Now we move on to the last group of fan games, which I think are the wildest ones, the mods. Which, let me tell you, we're gonna be talking about some wild stuff. I'm talking Super Saiyan 20,000. This shit's gonna get crazy. That's so sus. That is so sus, guys. I can't respect this. No! Now, when I say mods, I'll be referring to mods only for one game, Budokai Tenkaichi 3. BT3 was one of the most beloved Dragon Ball games of all time. With an enormous roster and a lot of content, it was one of the most well-received Dragon Ball games ever. After disappearing for, you know, ever, fans took it upon themselves to update the game in various fan-made mods, having possibly the most active modding community in all of Dragon Ball. Of course, about a month ago, a true fourth game was announced. This game came out first, so obviously it'll be better. Budokai Tenkaichi 4 is a mod of the third game headed by Herotax. This is possibly the most well-known Dragon Ball mod or even fan game due to the recent surge of YouTubers covering in the past year. And this is for good reason. This game is incredible and a true love letter to the Dragon Ball series. 
This mod takes the original game, which was a solid arena fighter with a ton to offer, and somehow adds more while also trimming the fat of the original. While some characters were cut or condensed, it added tons more from newer parts of the series, including my boy Hatchiak, which I, I don't blame you if you've got zero clue who this is, nobody knows who he is. Not only that, but new voice lines, custom made moves, costumes, stages, character sprites, it's got it all. There's also new story stages added to the game to include the newest show, and new game modes such as themed missions and whatever the hell this was. It was like a dating simulator. I got no clue. I know this probably doesn't seem too crazy to non-Dragon Ball fans, and again, I apologize if you aren't a fan that made it this far, but as a fan who grew up with this game, this is the sequel to this franchise that we never got. 10 Gokus out of 10. Alright, enough being a nerd. Next up, we've got another mod called United Universe V2 Remake, made by XJoseBT3, which just opens up with a bunch of stolen fan art, a stolen fan video, and a bunch of stolen renders, so you know this is gonna be something else. Now, this mod takes a bit more of a quantity over quality format, and I mean, I could get behind that, but it might be pushing it a bit when you add Super Saiyan 10 Goku. Now, unlike the last mod, this more just adds new characters rather than tries to make a new game out of it. The creator uh, definitely succeeded in this. Also, this game's in Spanish, which shout out to the Spanish Dragon Ball community for carrying the entire mod scene and most of the franchise itself. As you may have noticed with f***ing Super Saiyan 10 Goku, unlike the last game, this one includes fan-made characters, which there's nothing wrong with, uh, but what the hell are these things? A lot of the new characters are also heavily unbalanced, but I mean, it's kind of fun just cutting through characters as Super Saiyan 7 Goku. That is, until I have to fight an unfair character and get my ass beat immediately. Anyways, I'll be giving this game a 6 out of 10 Goku just for sheer fun, but trust me when I say it gets crazier, and when I say crazier, I mean Super Saiyan 20,000 crazy. Dragon Ball Super vs Dragon Ball AF is a mod created by Dan Vitsk, even though like 80 sources say otherwise, I am very certain that they are the creator. Anyways, I have to give this person credit, cause he made the most insane piece of Dragon Ball media I have ever seen. Well, maybe next to the Saiyan walk. This game has everyone, and when I say everyone, I mean everyone. All the characters from the shows, the newest movie, fan characters, things, even being a gigantic Dragon Ball fan, I have never heard of. Like, who the f*** is kidnapped? He's pretty good though, I'm not gonna lie. Some of these models are terrifying. If I showed you any of this, would you be able to tell me who these characters are? Nope, you got it wrong. It's Shenron Z Warrior and Super Saiyan 5 Pan. And of course, we can't ignore the elephant in the room. Super Saiyan 20,000 Goku. 20,000, like what did the creator smoke to come up with that? It's a real thing from the fan base? Oh. Anyways, it doesn't even matter because apparently Super Saiyan 8 Vegeta is way stronger. Guess the 19,992 power-ups didn't do anything for Goku. This game was just something. I can't exactly describe the feeling I felt when I saw some of these characters, but I felt it. For that, I give this game 4 Gokus out of 10. It would have been 3, but I think Evil Goku sold the game for me just a little more. And that was all the Dragon Ball fan games. They were interesting. There was a couple other ones I wanted to take a look at, such as ZEQ or Demon Breaker, but this video is getting a little long, so for if some reason this does really well, maybe I'll revisit this topic in the future. Despite the quality of some of these games, it's nice to see that there are still people out there who keep the Dragon Ball fan game scene alive. I mean, even though it's probably one of the biggest anime ever, the scene isn't too crazy, at least compared to other fan game scenes. And also, I don't think any fan game in any franchise will ever have the peak of Super Saiyan 20,000 Goku, and I will stand by that claim until I'm dead. Yeah, that's it. What? Wait, did, did my Dragon Ball Tycoon data save? No, 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 no. This can't be! Ah! Ah! Yeah, it turns out all of that was just a symptom of Lyme disease.